Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about fearful avoidance and dismissive avoidance and how to cope with feeling your emotions after being numb. So we'll talk about a little bit about why this happens in the first place. And we will discuss some strategies for how to actually start feeling your emotions again, according to your attachment style. So before I dive into this, we are still running our with you sale to support our community. The coupon code is with you, all one word. It's for 25% off everything. And um, that includes the membership. So the memberships come literally with a money back guarantee. Um, if you're not over the moon with everything in there and every membership comes with our 40 plus pre-recorded courses. I add new courses or a new course every single month. And it comes with four live webinars that I do every single week with our students, as well as six events from our attachment coaches that are basically social events. Um, there are like mastermind groups that they run, um, as well as these like guided morning and evening routines. And so basically all of those are over video and you get to connect with like-minded people in there. So it's a really good opportunity if we're isolated to be able to go in there, meet new people, connect with people. Um, a lot of people have like made friends with people in their area. And you know, when quarantine and lockdowns are lifted, they're gonna spend time with them. Some people who aren't in lockdown have actually met people and gone and spent time with them outside of the school. So it's kind of an exciting little um, opportunity. So check that out. The link is in the description box below. And again, there's a money back guarantee. So if you go in there and you're not like so happy with everything that we have to offer, then you have that guarantee. So I am going to dive into this question from somebody. So this person says, I'm FA, but I think I would have been DA if it wasn't for my grandmother. I don't think I've felt a sense of belonging with my own family, or did I feel emotionally supported by them, validated, seen, heard, etc." And basically, this individual says, through therapy and the courses, I'm finally becoming more secure, but I still get flashbacks. Lately, I seem to be tapping into my DA side for healing. Could you do a video about DAs and how to integrate their emotions after not feeling them for so long? So here's what happens, okay? FAs and DAs both share the ability to really repress and numb their emotions, but in different ways. Fearful avoidance can do it for short periods of time. And they can stay there for a little bit of a while, but they won't stay there permanently, not pervasively the way that DAs can. DAs can stay in a constant state of repression for prolonged periods of time and sometimes for their entire lives. Whereas FAs, they can repress and eventually they'll usually hit a breaking point and then they'll kind of, you know, um, become volatile in some form, maybe saying like a really rude remark or being sharp with their tongue or yelling or things like this. And this is because fearful avoidance ultimately will feel all those built up emotions. And you, you imagine like a volcano volcano waiting to erupt. It's like you can only repress stuff for so long before it kind of comes back out again. And their coping mechanism, ultimately, um, they want connection. And so that coping mechanism of repression will only last so long until they feel the need to kind of be honest with what they're feeling with the people around them and to sort of show up for themselves and get that those feelings out. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to work on ending repression if you're doing the healing work and you're working on yourself, okay? So let's say you're a dismissive avoidant, and this really applies to both attachment styles for the record, but let's say you have been chronically emotionally repressed for a long period of time. Well, one of the first things is we have to understand that emotions are basically just sensations in our body. They are the reflection of the mind in the body. So when we think a thought, that often produces an emotional reaction. Actually, there's always some form of emotional reaction produced by thinking. It can just be very small and very subtle. It's on a huge continuum of massively varying degrees. So let's say we think a thought. And let's say the thought is, I'm not going to find anybody and I'm going to be alone forever. Okay. And I hear these stories all the time from people. So you think that thought. And then what do you feel when you think that thought? Well, you feel negative emotions. How do we experience negative emotions? How do we know that we're feeling negative emotions? Because we feel uncomfortable sensations in our body. So you might think that thought of I'm going to be alone forever. And then what do you feel? Maybe a heaviness in your chest and shoulders, maybe an ache in your heart, maybe a pang in your stomach or gut. And all of these things are actually what we're experiencing. That's what emotions are. 
And so it's funny because we can go a very long time trying to stay away from emotions and not feel emotions and being very afraid to feel them. But in reality, all that's happening is that we're feeling uncomfortable sensations in our body at the very le- at the very most. And while that can obviously lead in some extreme cases to panic attacks and things like this, all that's happening, even during panic attacks, even during grief, even during all these things is that we are feeling chronically uncomfortable sensations in our body that sort of engulf us for periods of time. And so there's great value in being able to witness those sensations and break identification from them because when we don't attach to them, when we don't let them engulf us, when we're able to observe them and notice the actual sensations, which are emotions, or at least our experience of emotions, um, then, then they lose some of their power over us. But that's a different topic of conversation. When we're trying to feel our emotions again, after we've repressed them, we basically have to tap into the fact and the understanding that emotions are sensations. And so what we've learned to do if we've learned to chronically repress our feelings as the dismissive avoidant has, is we've essentially learned to chronically disconnect from the awareness of our body. And what we have to be able to do in order to fix that is practice getting in touch with the sensations in our body, practice getting in touch with what kind of emotions we do feel. And so there are two excellent exercises you can use to do this. Number one, you can practice thinking of very strong memories, memories that have a lot of happiness for you, have a lot of nostalgia for you, where you felt an extreme amount of love, where you felt a lot of grief or sadness, where you felt fear, and you know, don't pick things that are going to re-trigger you if, if you don't trust yourself to process. Pick memories that maybe you felt afraid because you thought someone was breaking into your house and then you realized they weren't. Pick memories that, that were not necessarily traumatizing, but that had lots of strong emotion attached to them. And then what your practice is to do is to close your eyes so that you block out all other sensory input and sit down and practice just feeling what comes up for you. So practice tuning into your body. And as you think of that memory and you think of that fear, you can ask yourself, what does fear feel like in my body? And maybe you notice, oh, that pain in my gut. Oh my gosh, like that tingling on the back of my neck. You can pick a a, a time when you're angry. What does anger feel like in my body? Maybe you go, oh my goodness, it feels like heat in my chest and shoulders. Or when I'm really angry, it feels almost like coldness in my arms. And so you want to tap in and practice reestablishing that connection between your mind, your thoughts, or and you or your memories, which are going to trigger thoughts and, and perceptions, um, and then your body and the sensations that come with that. And that's essentially your practice: is to pick those big experiences and practice reprogramming your subconscious mind to get comfortable reassociating thoughts with feelings and feelings as being sensations and noticing how you experience your emotions in your body. And then a second exercise you can practice as well is, and this is very simple, is just practice um, doing body scans. It can be a small practice before bed and it can be something where you sit down and you just notice, do I feel any stored tension in my, um, the top of my head and my jaw and notice if I'm clenching my jaw, any sensations I'm feeling in my shoulders. Maybe I'm all tight in my posture and my body language. Maybe I am restricted and not breathing deeply in, in my chest and in my stomach. And so you can sort of do a body scan going from top to bottom or bottom to top and just notice the sensations in your body. And again, you're just practicing because repetition is a big part of what reprograms you're practicing reprogramming yourself to feel these things. So as I went through this video, I realized it's getting a little bit long. Um, And so I am going to make a separate video for fearful avoidance and how they can feel their emotions and some exercises they can do because it is slightly different though a lot of um, overlap does exist, but sometimes fearful avoidance can repress for different reasons. And we'll talk about in the next part of this series then how to reestablish that connection as a fearful avoidance. This is for dismissive avoidance specifically. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're getting a lot of value out of this channel, and I will see you in the next video.